What's up you guys, Zoeb here for OneGlanceTrader.com and welcome back to my Baby Pips Forex Education video series. We're now in grade four talking about everything to do with moving averages as part of the elementary school and if you're brand new and want to check out the opening video in grade four or check out grades one, two and three, you can click the link in the description which will take you to the YouTube playlist of all my baby pips tutorial videos and make sure you like this video and subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future baby pips videos now as i mentioned we just did an intro or into moving averages in the first video and in this video we are at the simple moving average or the sma and going into detail about what this is so if you go into the actual tutorial it goes into the calculation of the sma it then goes into how um, the SMA smooths out price and how different periods uh, react differently to price. So what I've done is I've just thrown up um, three moving three SMA moving averages on on my MT4 terminal. And for those of you who want to know how to add an SMA to your terminal, all you need to do is go to Insert Indicators, and it's under the Trend section. Click on Moving Average. And then you type in your period, which I'll go into in a second. And then you've got a drop down uh, of different methods. And in this particular video, we're interested in the simple moving average and then make sure it's applied to the close and then click OK. And then that will be added to the chart. So the SMA kind of calculation, um, let's just say we are looking at um, at this case here, if I hover over this, a 100 period SMA um what it does it adds up all the closed prices of the last 100 bars of your particular time frame so i'm on the i'm on a one hour chart on the gbp usd so it will take it will add up all 100 closed prices of the one hour chart so the last 100 hours and then divide that by the actual period in this case 100 to get an average price of the last 100 bars and then it will plot the line or the in this case so as time goes on at the next bar we'll look at the last 100 bars taking into account the last bar that was just created and again you can do this and do an sma on or any moving average um, at any period um, and on any time frame so if you are looking at a daily chart and want to have a 100 SMA on what that will do then is add up the close bars of the last 100 days divided by 100 to give your 100 day SMA uh, figure so that's kind of how uh, how it works and just to let you know <clears throat> what I've got on this chart I've got a 100 um, SMA 50 SMA and a 10 SMA. And what I've done is I've just taken a screenshot so I can kind of doodle <clears throat> with my stylus on here just to give a bit more of an explanation of what it is. So just so we can, I can remember myself, that was 100, that was 50, I believe that was 10 uh, from, from memory. So the first thing uh, that a uh, SMA or any type of moving average looks to do is to smooth out the data or in this case the price action so you can clearly see here that you know price is making higher highs higher lows and it's currently there at the moment and what we've done here with the 10 50 and 100 SMA I'm just going to delete that um, you can see here that it it smooths out the price action and the closer or the smaller the period, the closer the uh, moving average will react to price. So you can see that the 10, uh, 10 SMA is very close to price and it's got a lot more up and downs as opposed to the 100 um, SMA. It's a lot more smoother in there because it's taking into account more data. So therefore, what we call that is that the higher the period, the more um, the more the indicator lags behind price. So a good example of this is is at uh, this bar over here. So you can see that this bar takes a massive up, uh, retraces slightly, and then kicks off this uh, this particular trend. So 
we can see here that the um, 10, 10 SMA, as that bar goes up, makes that quick move up shortly after the bar. It's not going to happen straight away, but shortly after the bar, if I can actually draw properly, it might actually help um, at, you know, this bar over, over here, kind of the, the MA kind of reaches itself uh, to that level. So we've got that piece there. And then if I go to the 50 SMA, you can see at around this level, you know, the SMA starts to start pointing up. And if we correlate that to price action, it's around this level over here. So you can see now that the 50 uh, MA took a little bit longer to actually try to determine the upward momentum. And then the last one is the 100 MA. Even with this spike, it's still going flat, flat, flat. And then at this point, it starts to turn itself up at this level here, which then if you look at around price action, is around that level there. So you can see that the longer the period, the more price, uh, the more it takes to react to current price levels. Now that could be a good thing and a bad thing. So depending on, and we'll go into this in, in later videos and later tutorials of how we can use moving averages, whether it's the SMA or the EMA, uh, into, into identifying trading opportunities. But if you are, one way without going into too much detail of it now is that what you can do is you can use a longer term SMA to determine the full, the, the longer term trend. And most people kind of use the 100 or the 200 SMA or the, or the 100, 200 EMA. So you can see here that when price is above the 100 SMA, you are considered inside an uptrend. And when you are below the 100 EMA, like in this price action over here, you're considered to be inside a downtrend. Now, one thing you've got to bear in mind with moving averages, and we'll go into this in later videos, is this choppiness over here. If you're trying to use moving averages as an indicator, as a buy or sell entry. And when we talk about the moving average crossover uh, in a couple of videos later, we'll go into the uh, pros and cons of kind of using that type of strategy. So, how do I kind of use, you know, SMAs or EMAs in terms of this? And again, I'm going a bit more further in because I feel that it's relevant to talk about it uh, now, is that I kind of use longer term um, EMAs or, or SMAs to determine what the long term trend is. And what that does is set my basis or bias on whether or not I should be taking uh, trades long or I should be taking trades short. I don't personally take trades off moving averages, but what it does, and as I mentioned, it smooths out price and tells me whether or not I should be looking for long opportunities if price is above an EMA or an SMA, or taking short opportunities if it's below a uh, EMA or an SMA. So that's all I really wanted to go through in this video is just give you a quick update on the types of SMAs, how SMAs are calculated. And in the next video, we'll go into how EMAs are calculated and also looking into kind of the pros and cons between EMAs and SMAs. And then we'll get into the juicy stuff of how we can build trading strategies and how we can use moving averages as part of our confluence strategy to aid in your trading decisions. So I really hope you like this video. Check out the thumbnails on the screen now. If the latest video is up uh, for that one, you can click on that. If not, there'll be something else, something very relevant around moving averages. Uh, please like, please subscribe, and I shall see you guys in the next video.